And one of the areas where Satan attacks us more than anything else is in how we feel about ourselves. Now, just very seriously, I want to tell you that a lot of people's problems, more than anything else, your problem is you just don't like yourself. And a lot of people that don't like themselves don't even know they don't like themselves. And they blame everything on everybody else. Well, if you wouldn't do this, I'd be happy. And if you would do that, I'd be happy. And if you didn't do this, I'd be happy. But you know, if you can get happy with who you are and happy yourself, then you can spend your life making somebody happy rather than being mad at them because they're not making you happy. Amen? And so I finally came to grips with the fact in my life that I wasn't able to love anybody because I didn't love myself. I couldn't have mercy on other people. I was very legalistic because I was very legalistic with myself. I didn't receive God's mercy. And you can't give away what you don't have. And so one of the things I'm going to ask you to do as part of your journey here at this conference is somewhere along the way, get in touch with how you feel about yourself. Do you like yourself? Do you love yourself? Do you respect yourself? Because here's the bottom line. What you believe about yourself is much more important than what anybody else believes about you. Come on. What you believe about yourself is much more important than what anybody else believes about you. And if you know who you are in Christ, then you don't have to live as a people pleaser. Satan regularly attacks our worth and value. You know, when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, the account is in Luke chapter 4, two different times Satan said to him, well, if you are the Son of God, well, if you are a child of God, then why do you have these problems? Well, if God loves you, then why hasn't he answered your prayers? He's always trying to attack our worth and our value and keep, get us thinking that God doesn't love us. And so we want to talk for just a minute about how your self-image affects your future. Because adventure requires boldness, and boldness requires confidence, and confidence requires a healthy self-image. So how do you see yourself? 2 Samuel chapter 9, the first eight verses. And David said, is there still anyone left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? What we need to see out of that is God is saying, is there anybody that I can show kindness to for Jesus' sake? God's not good to us because we deserve it, because we don't. But he's good to us because Jesus deserved it, and we believe in him, and we're joint heirs with him. And he said, everything the Father has is mine, and everything that's mine, I'm giving it to you. And now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba, and they called him to David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, I am your servant. And the king said, Is there still someone of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God to him? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan, but he is crippled in his feet. Now, there's a story behind this. I'm not going to get into all this. He actually had fallen down the steps when Saul and Jonathan died and it was announced that David was going to become the king and people were afraid and he fell and that was how he became crippled. But nonetheless, here's this young boy that was the king's grandson, the son of the new king's covenant friend, but he spends his life in hiding in a place called Lodibar have you ever lived in Lodibar? <laughs> I was trying to think of a way to be cute, and I thought, well, I've been low at Debar before. <laughs> Can you imagine me hanging out 
at the bar, <laughs> depressed because my life was so bad. Thank God I'm not at Lodi Bar anymore. Amen. <laughs> And the king said, well, where is he? And Ziba said, he's in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, at Lodibar. Then King David sent and brought him from the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, at Lodibar. <laughs> and Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, boy, these people had some names, didn't they? <laughs> came to David and fell on his face and paid homage. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, behold, I am your servant. Now, you got to watch this. And David said to him, don't fear, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan, and I will restore to you all the land of Saul your father, and you shall eat at my table always. And he paid homage and said, what is your servant that you should show regard for such a dead dog as I am? Now we see the real problem. It was his own poor self-image that kept him from going to the palace, boldly going in and saying, I am King Saul's grandson. Jonathan is my father, and I have rights. How many of you, because you have a poor self-image, never go boldly to the throne? Come boldly to the throne. The Bible says, well, God, if you'll just do this, and if you'll just do that, try to keep that phrase out of your prayers, because the word just means just enough to barely get by. Well, God, if you'll just help me tonight, I don't want you to just help me tonight. I need help every single moment of every single day. If you'll just get me out of trouble this time, Lord. No, you're going to get in trouble again tomorrow and tomorrow and the next day, and you're going to help, need help then too. So why don't you just go ahead and admit it and say, God, I need help every moment of every day. Please don't ever leave me for one second because I need you. I need you. You're going to have to get a little bit bolder if you want to get very much out of God. You've got to ask for a lot. We hope you enjoyed this teaching. To get more from Joyce, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.